Hey, Stephanie. Are you still caught up with moving my stuff to the new house? Damn. I wish I could lend a hand with all those boring tasks. But work's got me tied up with some major stuff that needs my attention. You get it, babe, right? Hey there, honey. Don't you worry one bit. I've got this covered. No sweat. Plus, your parents are also here to give me a hand, and I'm super grateful for that. Just put all your energy into work and give it your all. I've got the moving situation handled. You can count on me. You should have known better than asking my parents for help. They're not exactly spring chickens, you know. Besides, moving house is something I expect you, as my wife, to handle on your own. Can't you take care of something as basic as that? Jeez. But didn't you just mention a few minutes ago how you wished you could lend a hand? And now you're saying I should handle everything on my own? Isn't that a bit contradictory, babe? Ugh. Learn to read between the lines, please. You're my wife. It's only natural for me to say sweet things like that. Don't you know I'm such a gentleman? Gotta keep up appearances and play nice, you know? It's just part of who I am. Oh, I see. All right, I get where you're coming from. But there's honestly so much to do, and it's going to take me a few days to handle it all alone. And just to clarify, I never forced your parents to help me or anything like that. They actually offered to help, especially since you didn't want to spend money on hiring movers. All right, all right. I get your point. So stop with the constant whining already. Aren't we supposed to be all lovey-dovey as newlyweds, talking about rainbows and unicorns? If we keep bickering over this petty nonsense, what will other people think of us, huh? Okay, but let's be clear here. I didn't start this argument. You did. I thought you'd be pleased that I listened to your suggestion and didn't hire movers to save some cash. But instead of a pat on the back, I got scolded. Ha. You think just because we got married a month ago, you can start strutting around like you own everything? Give me a break. Let me remind you, I'm the man here, the head of this household, and you better do as I say. Don't get it twisted. Excuse me? Where is all this attitude suddenly coming from? You never said anything like this to me before we got married. I can't help but wonder, is this the real you? Are you finally revealing your true colors now? What on earth are you talking about? I'm still the same person, and I didn't hide anything from you, okay? Now that we're husband and wife, it's not all fun and games anymore. There are a few rules that I expect you to follow for things to run smoothly around here. You catch my drift, right? Rules? Well, this is news to me. I don't recall us ever discussing any specific rules. So, enlighten me. What exactly are these rules you're referring to? I was really going to drop this bomb on you right after we said I do. But of course, I'm all about being a loving and considerate husband. I didn't want to overwhelm you with all this stuff right off the bat. That's why I'm telling you now, babe. So, here's the deal. Once you're officially part of my family, there are a few rules you got to follow. These rules have been around for ages, passed down from generation to generation, all in the name of keeping our marriages happy. It's a whole thing, trust me. Well, I'm honestly at a loss for words. It's just surprising to hear this now. I can't help but think that would have been better if you had brought it up earlier, like before we even got married. Hey, chill out. These rules are a piece of cake, I promise. First things first, no name calling. No matter how ticked off we get, let's never stoop that low. It's just plain disrespectful and totally hurts. Okay. Fair enough. Another thing, and this one's a biggie, no cheating. It's the absolute worst thing you can do. It's downright disgusting and has the power to completely rip a family apart quicker than you can say, oops. Let's keep our loyalty intact, yeah? Hmm. Yeah, sure. I wouldn't do such a thing. Oh, and last but not least, whenever I feel like it's time for some baby-making action, you better hop into bed and follow my lead, no questions asked. You know, just go with the flow and all that. Wait. What? That sounds a little strange, to be honest. What's the big deal? You're my wife. 
so it's the least you can do for me. It's your sacred duty as a wife to just crank out some kids for your beloved husband. I mean, it's not like you have anything better to do, right? Hey, listen, it's not like I'm going to be all set and ready to go whenever you snap your fingers. So it's kind of unfair for you to expect me to fulfill your every desire like that. We're in this together, you know? It goes both ways. I wouldn't dream of demanding you to jump into bed with me if you're not feeling it. Let's keep things fair and respect each other's boundaries, all right? Excuse me? Are you for real? What kind of wife are you if you can't even fulfill the simplest wish of your dear husband? I married you to bring happiness into my life, not to add more stress. I can't believe I got myself into this mess. Ugh, now I'm really starting to regret the day I married you. What a disaster. Is this some kind of twisted joke or something? If it is, I have to say, it's not fun at all. Please, don't say things like that. Well, if you don't want me to utter such words, then maybe you should take a long, hard look at what you just said and start putting some serious effort into fixing your behavior from this moment onward. I demand better from you, and it's time you step up and make things right. No more excuses. Hey, George. What's up, buddy? How's life treating you? I bet you're still basking in the bliss of your newlywed status, am I right? Congratulations on tying the knot, man. Well, not exactly. But thanks, buddy. I really appreciate it. What do you mean, not exactly? Is something wrong? Yeah, something's definitely wrong. My wife, she doesn't listen to what I say at all. What? Did you fill her in on the three golden rules? You know, those essential guidelines that she needs to be aware of. Oh man, I totally did. I spilled the beans and told her all about those three rules just like you advised. But she wasn't having it. She said the first two rules were fine, but the third one was a load of nonsense. And let me tell you, things got heated real fast. We ended up having a huge fight about it. She even went as far as refusing to talk to me or share a meal until I give up on that rule. Can you believe it? She's threatening to make me cook and clean all by myself if I don't change my way of thinking. Goodness, that woman is off her rocker. Can't she grasp the fact that cooking and cleaning are meant for women and women only? How on earth did she even come up with such an outrageous idea? It's mind-boggling, man. She'd better come to her senses soon, because this is just too much to handle. I know, right? I can't believe it either. Honestly, man, before we got married, she was this super obedient and easygoing woman, always nodding along to whatever I said. But now, it's like she's done a complete 180. She's become a whole different person, and I can't even wrap my head around it. I can't even recognize her anymore. It's like she's been replaced by some kind of doppelganger. This whole situation is just mind-blowing, bro. Dude, I totally get it. She's acting just like my damn wife when we first started out. Let me tell you, my wife was a true narcissist. But then I laid down the law and imposed those three golden rules on her. I showed her who is in charge and asserted my dominance. And guess what? She had no other option but to comply with my every command. I'm telling you, now my wife is like a super obedient lab dog. She knows who wears the pants in this relationship, bro. Wait, huh? What does this whole narcissist thing even mean? Huh? Don't tell me you've never heard of it before. Yeah, this is the first time I've heard of it. Is it something bad? Oh, absolutely. A narcissistic wife is like a whole package of control, manipulation, and cunningness, my friend. She'll straight up ignore anything you say and twist you around her little finger to get whatever she wants. And let me tell you, she's got a whole arsenal of tricks up her sleeve to guilt trip you or even throw threats around just to have things go her way. If you're stuck with a woman like that, man, your life is practically doomed. I'm talking game over, no second chances. It's like they're born with this narcissism gene or something, and it's just a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. We never know when it's gonna happen, and that's what's so damn terrifying. Hmm, 
Hold on a sec. Now that you bring it up, it does sound eerily similar to my own wife. Are you telling me Stephanie might be a narcissist too? Yeah, it's possible. You never know, man. But hey, no worries. There are actually plenty of ways to figure out if someone is a real narcissist or not. For instance, I used this test on my wife that I found online. If you want, I can send you the link so you can have your wife take it too. Trust me, when I saw the test results, I couldn't believe my own eyes. Turns out, my wife scored a whopping 90% on the narcissism scale. It's like, mind-blowing, you know? Dude, that's messed up. Seriously. Alright, Philip. Hook me up with that link ASAP. I am relying on you, man. Man, I gotta say, having a friend like you makes me so darn happy. No doubt about it, you're my ultimate best buddy in the entire universe. Hey, Stephanie. What the hell are you doing up so late? Aren't you supposed to be home by now? Or did you forget how to tell time? Explain this to me. Why is there no food on the damn table yet? Don't you dare come up with some lame excuse about being too incompetent to cook a damn meal anymore. Ugh, look who decided to text me, George. Gotta hand it to you. You've got some nerve. Seriously, do you have any shame left? After everything you've put me through? What on earth are you talking about, woman? Ugh, drop the pretense already. You know full well what I'm talking about. What? I seriously have no clue what you're getting at. Oh, hold on a sec. Are you talking about that little spanking I gave you yesterday? What else do you think I'm mentioning, huh? You hit me, out of nowhere, with a wooden paddle. How do you expect to explain that? You completely lost control over absolutely nothing. What do you mean, over nothing? Have you even taken a good look at yourself in the mirror? You've been a lousy wife, not doing a damn thing I ask of you. It's like you think you're the boss around here, when it should clearly be me calling the shots. That's why I had to give you that little spanking, just to put you back in your place and remind you who's in charge around this house. And pray tell, what do you mean by a good wife? Am I supposed to slave away for you nonstop without ever taking a break? I have a job too, you know. Sometimes I even put in overtime. Yet despite all that, I still manage to keep the house clean and prepare three meals a day for you. Whenever I have to work extra hours, I make sure there's food waiting for you in the fridge to heat up. But you, you always find something to complain about, even the tiniest of things. What the hell? I didn't blow a ton of cash on that extravagant wedding and bring you home just to feast on microwaved meals. I want a proper wife. Is that so hard to understand? A wife who can fulfill my needs. A wife who can make me feel like the alpha male that I am. And you... You outright refused when I mentioned wanting to have kids with you. Can you believe that? Oh, you mean that time when I clearly told you I was about to have an important meeting, but you still insisted that I come home so we could make kids together? Honestly, what were you thinking? Didn't I spell it out for you with the three rules? You better satisfy my every whim whenever I demand it from you. That's the absolute minimum you can do as my wife. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I'm your wife, not some servant at your beck and call. Honestly, I've had enough of your constant yelling, screaming, and abusive behavior throughout our time together. I'll only consider coming back when you give me a sincere apology and show that you're willing to change. What? Now you're stooping to threatening me too? Goodness gracious, Philip was absolutely spot on. You truly are a narcissist. No doubt about it. Excuse me? I am what now? You're a total narcissist, aren't you? You've got all the qualities down perfectly. Manipulative, controlling, and cunning. You really got it all, don't you? Um, are you actually describing yourself here? Because based on what I've seen throughout our time living together, I think those character traits fit you like a glove. Ah, uh, there you go. Classic behavior of a narcissist, never accepting the fact that they're the problem. Instead, always pointing fingers and blaming others for their own mistakes. People like you seriously need some serious re-education to finally learn your place and become decent human beings. 
You know why I spanked you? Because you deserve every bit of it. Oh, well, if that's the case, why don't you go ahead and give yourself a good smack first? Because from where I'm standing, it's pretty darn clear that you're the one with all the narcissistic traits, not me. Oh, really? Well, why don't we put it to the test then? Let's play a little game and answer some questions. Voila. We'll find out once and for all who the real narcissist is between the two of us. Do we really have to do that? I mean, is it really necessary? Sure, why not? If it turns out that you're more of a narcissist than I am, I'll gladly apologize to you and even take on all the chores if necessary. But if it's revealed that you're the real narcissist, then you'll have to apologize to me and do everything I say without any resistance. Yeah, fine, whatever. Let's get this over and done with then. Um, George? What's up with this divorce papers on the table? I see your signature on them, so I'm guessing this isn't some kind of joke, right? Well, duh. Obviously, it's not a joke. Why in the world would I want to keep sticking around with a narcissistic piece of work like you, huh? I'm done putting up with your self-centered, jerkish behavior. Oh, so now I'm the narcissist, huh? Guess what? The results are in, and you're a whopping 95% narcissist. Bravo! Give yourself a pat on the back for that outstanding achievement. I can't believe I didn't catch on to that before we got married. How foolish of me, right? I must have made the grandest mistake of my existence, and I didn't even have a clue. Hold up. What? The test results are here? When did they even send them? And why didn't you bother mention anything about it? Show me those papers. I want to see them for myself. Oh, don't bother. As I already mentioned, you're 95% narcissist. When I saw that, it made me so mad that I burned it to ashes. What? You burned the test results? Are you crazy? I was mostly mad at myself, you know? Mad for falling for your deceitful act and actually marrying you. But hey, thanks to Philip, my trustworthy bestie and brilliant advisor, I finally woke up from my slumber of stupidity. The best move I can make right now is divorcing your sorry ass. Oh, wow. Philip strikes again, huh? Seems like he's your all-time advisor whenever you need some guidance. And, correct me if I'm wrong, but I bet he's the genius behind this brilliant divorce plan too, right? That's right. Philip has a narcissistic wife of his own, so he totally gets where I'm coming from. Actually, he's going through a divorce himself. Can you imagine dealing with a real narcissist for three whole years? Well, at least things are looking up for him now. Oh, fantastic. Now I'm being labeled as a narcissist without any solid evidence to support it. It's mind-boggling to realize that you'd rather trust the words of your wacky friend over your own wife's, isn't it? Oh, look at us, the mighty men, the rulers of the household, walking away and leaving you women helpless, crawling on your knees, begging for our return. <laughs> and hey, don't get too comfortable just yet. I'll also be demanding alimony and compensation for our shattered marriage because obviously I'm the poor victim here. Stephanie, enough with the stubborn act. Playing hard to get won't get you anywhere, you know. It's been a solid five months already. Don't you think it's dragging on a bit too much? I haven't received a single text from you. What's up with you? What's the deal? Oh my goodness, George. Why are you so relentless? Didn't I make it crystal clear that we're done? D-O-N-E. Done. Oh, you're insane. Women like you are absolutely helpless without men like me. You know that? You won't last a day without me. I'm like oxygen to you, the very essence of your existence. Haha. <laughs> You're still as funny as ever, huh? Okay, I'll admit it. I used to love you and your jokes. And I thought you'd love me too. But boy, was I wrong. It turned out to be the biggest mistake ever. I've had enough of your nonsense, and I'm ready to move on with my life. But riddle me this, why on earth do you desperately want me back? Let me guess, things aren't going exactly as planned for you. Well, I, you know, man, I 
can't stand living with my parents anymore. Not only did they go ballistic when I handed you those divorce papers, but they've also got me doing all the chores around the house. They treat me like a little kid, I swear. I feel like I've lost all my authority and strength as an alpha male. It's like I've become completely powerless. Hmm. Really? Sounds like karma got you good. I can't say I'm a fan of you, but I've always had respect for your parents. They're generally good folks. It's a shame their son didn't turn out the same way, though. They even had the audacity to call me a deadbeat. Whenever they get the chance, they love lecturing me about how little I earn and how I should be hustling harder to find a proper full-time gig instead of relying solely on my current part-time job. Can you imagine? Wait, you're still stuck with that part-time job? You assured me that you'd find a new job with one one year after our wedding, tops. How foolish of me to believe your words. Well, I did give it my all, but I just couldn't find that perfect job that matches my caliber, you know? I'm way beyond what those positions have to offer. It would hurt my ego as a man to settle for lowly jobs like being a waiter or a cashier, just like my parents suggested. Okay. So, you'd rather be a burden on everyone around you than swallow your pride? That's just wonderful. I guess you and Philip are truly best buddies. I mean, both of you seem to be living a laughable existence. <laughs> What are you trying to say? Philip is actually doing great on his own. He told me he's never felt more liberated and in charge of his life since his divorce was finalized. He even mentioned with a smile that his diabetes has improved significantly now that his narcissistic ex-wife is out of the picture. Oh, really? It sounds like he's been feeding you a load of lies then. Aw, poor thing. You've been fooled by Philip all this time without even realizing it. What on earth are you on about? Philip never lies to me. Are you absolutely sure about that? Because I heard straight from his ex-wife that she's had enough of him begging for her to come back. How much more pathetic can he possibly get? Seriously. Wait, what did you just say? The Philip I know would never sink so low as to beg for his worthless narcissistic wife to return. Well, that's exactly what he did. Back when they were married, Philip wouldn't lift a finger to help with the chores. Not only that, he used to go out drinking all the time, knowing that his wife would take care of everything at home. After enduring his condescending attitude and laziness for three long years, Bethany finally decided to call it quits. In my opinion, it's a bit late, but I'm glad that she made that choice. Now that they're divorced, Philip has no one to rely on anymore. Juggling his job and the housework is already overwhelming for him, which is why he doesn't have time to go out drinking like he used to. As a result, his diabetes has significantly improved. Good for him, I guess. So, it's true. He's been begging his wife to come back? Man, where did his backbone go? It's so embarrassing for us guys. Oh, really? And what about you? Weren't you just begging me to come back, like, five minutes ago? Well, those are two different situations. At least Philip has a decent job and a decent income, while I'm currently struggling financially. Don't you remember? You're still my wife. It's your responsibility to support me, whether you like it or not. Sorry, but we're already divorced. What? Di divorced? How could it be? Here's the thing. I actually submitted the divorce papers with your signature on them. At first, I was planning to ask for alimony and compensation from you. But then your parents contacted me. They insisted on paying the amount of money I demanded from you. It seems they're so ashamed of what you did to me that they felt it was the right thing to do. They know that with your paltry income, you'd never been able to afford paying me that much money. Huh? What were they even thinking, paying you that crazy amount of money? They must have lost their marbles or something. Well, shouldn't you be grateful that they did that? I mean, it would have taken you at least three years to pay off the money I demanded from you. Oh, and what about you? You mentioned something about asking for compensation from me, too. I waited. But your lawyer never showed up. Well, I mean, man, you know I can't afford to hire a lawyer. They charge insane amounts for stuff like this nowadays. But why are we even having this conversation? Shouldn't we be talking about how we can make things work and get back to the good old days? You know, like patching things up and all that jazz. And what's the deal here? 
Could it be that you finally realized how much you relied on me financially, and now you want us to get back together so you can keep leeching off of me? Or maybe you just want someone to obey your ridiculous demands so you can feel superior? Either way, those days are long gone, my friend. If you're worried about not being able to afford things or can't handle your parents constantly nagging you, then get a job. Try to make a living for yourself. Oh, not this nonsense again. I've had my fill of lectures from my parents. I don't need any more from you. Man, if you were still my wife, you would have been spanked for your bossy attitude. Oh, really? Well, too bad, because I'm not your wife anymore. So bye. I hope our paths never cross again in the future. After our last conversation, George completely lost it and went on a frantic search for me. He reached out to my friends and family, but they all gave him the cold shoulder. Some even threatened to involve the police if he didn't stop harassing me. George's parents, not putting up with his procrastination anymore, finally helped him get a job as a sewer worker. Eventually, he accepted the job and started earning a decent income. I'm proud that George finally faced reality and is working hard to repay his parents for the money he owes them. I heard through the grapevine that George confronted Philip about his lies and they had a massive argument. Now they're pretty much enemies, ready to pick a fight whenever they encounter each other. Later on, I discovered an email about the narcissist test results that George had asked me to take. It turns out it got lost in the spam folder, so I didn't notice it. Surprisingly, or not so surprisingly, George scored 99% as a narcissist on the test, while I scored around 25%. It seems he couldn't handle admitting defeat and resorted to using the divorce tactic, thinking it would manipulate me into becoming the submissive wife he had always wanted. But boy, was he wrong. Anyway, I'm relieved that I could leave that awful past behind and focus on the future. Life is so much better without a narcissistic husband around.